Hello guys, um, welcome to my weekly Facebook Live. I'm Jen Burson, I'm the founder of Generation PR and the creator of the Profitable PR Pros community and all of the programs that you need and coaching and resources and everything you need to uh, become a pitching powerhouse and to launch, grow, and scale your own profitable PR agency. Um, I've been running my agency, Generation PR, for 16 years which is crazy. It makes me sound like a complete geezer. Um, hi guys. Hi, Eileen. Um, and I can see you guys. I'm on Instagram as well. Um, but my point in saying that is that I still love my business after all this time. And it is my goal, my mission, my purpose in life. Seriously, it is to give you the tools and strategies to intentionally build a business that you love in hopefully 16 years as well. And so we come every week to give you, you know, little bits of info, start conversations. Um, and today's topic is all about um, answering the question we get a lot, which is how much time should you be spending pitching your clients to the media every month or whatever? So... This is an interesting topic, and I think I'm going to give you an answer you're probably not expecting. So if you're expecting me to give you an answer that's a number, I'm not going to do that. Um, it's a little bit of a bait and switch because people always want to know, how many hours am I putting into this? How many hours per day should I or my team be pitching for a client? And the answer is it depends, right? It really depends where you are with this client. Are you in the middle of a launch? Um, are you kicking off things with the client, getting onboarded, um, developing a press plan, um, all of the things that happen at the beginning of the account? You know, all of that is different. I guess in that period, you're not really pitching. We're talking about how many hours pitching, but a launch would definitely be a period where you're putting more hours into your strategy and into the media outreach. So think about that. It's never the same in any given month. Clients are all at different places in their, um, you know, in their business for you and your kind of runway with what services you're offering to clients. So there's going to be times where there's more pitching to be done and you have to be more proactive. And then there's also times where there's fewer things to do. It ebbs and flows. It shifts around, okay? So what I always work my students towards or try to get them to work towards, and Elaine, who's here, knows because she's in all our programs, we want you to have consistent, predictable, recurring retainer revenue. And that means that you know what's coming in every single month. And sometimes there's going to be more that happens and sometimes there's gonna be less, that doesn't mean you charge more or charge less. You have to think about it across the board and you have to build in a profit. And when you start to consider how many hours in your calculation of your profit, you're trading dollars for hours and you can only really grow your revenue with the amount of hours that you have available to yourself and that's a finite resource. Time is a finite resource, obviously. So if you have a limited resource, but you're trying to exponentially grow your, oh God, you guys, the mom, the mom text chain is popping off right now. Um, <laughs> you'll probably see me clear in the WhatsApp. Um, but you know, your time is a finite resource. And if you're going to grow and scale a profitable agency and bring in exponential, you know, growth, you can't base it on the number of hours. So thinking about what goes into pitching, um, sometimes for me, it's like we just report results. We want our clients to see the results we get. Hi, Larissa. It's been a while. Nice to see you. Um, how's Costa Rica? Um, we want our clients to just get a juicy report that's full of results. That's the value that we provide. The value is not how many hours I'm pitching to the media. And also we know a lot of times that you can secure a result in a very quick turnaround. So you have these relationships you can leverage. So 
it's not really even possible to say, okay, I'm going to dis I'm going to spend high angel this many hours. You guys over here on um on Instagram, who's here? Say hi. I can see you. They're very active over here on Facebook. Let's have a little competition. Who can who can chit chat more with me? Oh, it's getting rainy. Pura Vida. Love it. Um, love, love it. That sounds lovely actually right now. Um, so we know that we are going to be reporting results. So if you're halfway through the month and there's not a lot of movement, you might need to stir the pot and start reaching out and saying, you know, we got to generate a little bit more interest for this client. So you'll start to be a little bit more proactive. You'll check in on pitches. You'll do your follow-ups. You'll check in on open opportunities, press samples that have been sent out. You're trying to generate results for the end of the month and the value. So my shift here that I'd like for you to make is to not have such a black and white perspective on I need to work and pitch this many hours. Hi, Nelson, um, for each account because you're going to limit yourself. You're going to box yourself in. And yes, I get it. You want to, especially when you're working with freelancers, if they want to make a certain amount per hour, just give them bulk hours. Just give them a bundle and say, if you get it done in this many hours or less or whatever, that's cool. But this is what I have available to you every single month. And I just care about the results. And it's easier for you to do that and to price out your services when you know what it costs every single month to execute those services. So it's about sharing the value and getting results. If you sit there and you think, I have to get dedicate this many hours, then you're missing out on an opportunity to scale your business. You can pitch, we know, like I said before, you can pitch certain outlets and get results faster if you have relationships. So should you be penalized and have to work more, you know, hours because you've cultivated those relationships over the course of, you know, 10, 20, sometimes 30 years. I know my audience on here right now, and I know how long they've been um, connecting with the media, Elaine, Nelson, like we've been in it for a long time and we've made those relationships. So if I put in an, a call or an email, I spend half an hour to get a really killer press it for a client. Does that mean I have to work a little harder and fill in that extra other half hour to meet my hourly quota? Like that's ridiculous. So when you figure out how many hours you're spending, that black and white perspective is boxing you in and you're eliminating that value that you're bringing by getting results faster. Um, it, the other thing that happens, we all know, is sometimes you pitch one client. This is why I have you guys work towards subject matter expertise and developing a deep niche um, authority, like become an authority in your niche, because then you know what's happening in certain industries. You become the go-to and all of the media contacts you're pitching overlap for all your clients. This is me overlapping. Overlap for all your clients. So we all know there's times when you pitch one client and the uh, editor you're talking to or journalist gets back to you and says, yes, I'm working on something. This is a great fit. And you know that it's also a good fit for your other client. Hi, Daria. You guys over here on Facebook, it's all members of my programs, which I love so much. Daria is the newest member of our agency accelerator, and I'm so happy you joined finally after all this time. And I'm so glad to welcome you in to that program um, and work with you a little closer in your business. But, you know, we know that when we pitch certain clients, when we have expertise and connections, Naisha, you guys, this is like, oh my gosh, all my favorite people are coming, coming back from a long time away. Good to see you. Uh, because you rock. Oh, thank you, Elaine. Mm, thank you. Um, so we know, okay, let me get back to the subject matter. When you are pitching for one client, you have these opportunities to leverage for other clients. Um, oh, good. You are in the right Marlicia. Yeah. Look at you guys all connecting. Um, you are absolutely in the right place. We got everything you need. We got so many tools and resources here. Um, I'm actually going to drop on Facebook a free resource. We have our PR insider secret. I can just drop it right here. Um, that's a good place, Marlicia, for you to start. Um, just grab that free download. Um, so the other thing, like I said, when you're niche down, your pitching becomes faster. You know what 
editors are looking for, you know what is happening in the industry, what's relevant in the industry, things that are trending, that's a value to you. That allows you to get results for your clients faster. So yay, Daria says, I am so excited. I'm so excited too. I'm so excited. Um, welcome. But um, this, is, this is what we're working towards. This is how you grow and scale a profitable agency with exponential growth opportunity. So when you have that black and white, like I need to bill this many hours and I should um, bill the client and figure out my rate based on the amount of time I'm spending, you're missing this huge opportunity. This is all the margin we get with retainer services. You know, this is when you develop deep expertise and you're ready to grow and scale, you're still basing it around dollars for hours. You're limited. We only have 24 hours a day. So, you know, you've got to have that margin built in. And this is the key here. It's not about the hours. It's about the value that you bring and the results that you deliver. Um, oh, Hmm. Um, Jen is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, Nelson and I have a very aligned philosophy on how we bill out for clients. He says, I pitch multiple clients at the same time, never, ever on an hourly basis. Never, guys, never, ever. Okay, so I knew a lot of people would come to this because I always get asked and I knew people would be interested in hearing me just give them an hour, like a, an hour amount, like spend 15 hours a month on each client. I can't tell you that. I can't. Like if you have a client that's in the middle of a launch, you're going to be spending more time. And sometimes when you ramp up and you get them rocking and rolling, then you're in this kind of flow state. You kind of are in like a maintenance mode. And it's a little easier and you have the resources you need from that client and you're able to connect with the media. The media knows to go to you for that client. Getting results is faster. So I want you guys to benefit from that value. I want you to benefit from that value that you're building in your business. This expertise that you're building, that's a benefit to your clients. They're paying you for that. So Getting results faster shouldn't punish you to have to do more because you're basing it on time. Do you see that? It's like, I've all, you know, you've probably heard the example of like going to the dentist and getting a cavity filled. You want that done and the result as quick. Shinadra, he's another new member of our program. Um, you want that result as quickly as possible. You're not paying your dentist an hourly rate for that cavity. In fact, you want it filled as fast as possible. Same with the haircut. You're paying for a good haircut. You're gonna go to somebody who's gonna give you a really cute little haircut in as fast a time as possible. I don't wanna sit there. I know some people like sitting there. I don't wanna sit there. I wanna be done in an hour and get out. But I'm not paying her for an hour. I'm paying her for the result. So if she gets it done faster, good for her. She gets to have more clients in her chair and make more money. That's awesome. And she has built that expertise and is able to you know, do a faster result. And as such, she can charge more and she can get more clients in her chair and make more money. So think about that. Your clients are not paying you for your time. They're paying you for the value you bring based on the results you get for them. So um, we're going after results, not quantities of time and pitching. And if the pitch is really good, you'll get a lot more results. So if you like, say for example, you write a pitch and it's not so great and it doesn't get traction. And now you have to go back to the drawing board and craft a completely different pitch. So that means you're spending more time on the account, but you're not getting as many results. Should the client pay more because you've spent 20 hours because the first pitch didn't land? Or should the client um, just pay you for the outcome of those pitches. So if your first pitch is a solid gold, you know, rock star pitch, or you're a pitching powerhouse, which is what we teach you in the pitch lab, um, we have a whole program around pitching. And I mean, the, the results our people are getting honestly blow me away. Like, I'm like, I hope people will think this is good. I know it's good, but the fact that people are using it and getting results, it just is like the best. I just love hearing when people get great results. 
but they're getting results faster because they're lasering in on timely relevant pitch angles. So should the client pay less because you got a result faster? Um, no, <laughs> they're paying for the value you bring, okay? So the client doesn't care about the amount of time you put in, they only care about results. So that's my little like re thought reversal, flip it on its head discussion for today. Because if you are still focused on dollars for hours or how many hours you should be spending pitching a client, you're stuck in, in a, a limited growth mode and you need to move towards you know, more value-based thinking and not this black and white, how many hours do I need to work thinking? Um, and Nelson says, if any potential client comes to me and wants to hire me on an hourly basis or on a pay per hit basis, <clears throat> you guys never, ever, ever, no pay per hit, no pay to play, no. Um, it immediately sets off a red flag for me and I instantly know that they don't understand my business and they don't, uh, you guys, I think my vision is going, I've, I have bad distance vision, but I think my close up vision is going now too. Ugh, don't get old guys. Well, I guess get old cause it's better than the alternative, but oh my God, my vision. Um, and I instantly know that they don't understand my business and that I don't want them as a client. That is absolutely, um, major red flags, Nelson. And actually the newest members of our um, agency accelerator will come to find out that in the content around filling your client pipeline, there's tons of content on red flags and what clients should make you run for the hills, run for the hills, right? And my husband shares this stuff too. He's in a completely different business, but we have talked about red flags in his industry and he has very confidently walked away from some really big client opportunities because he knew they would be an absolute nightmare, an absolute nightmare to the point where he would work so hard and the opportunity for the deal to close and for him to get a commission would be slim to none because the clients were so um, like the red flags were, you know, going off left and right. And that's going to happen to you too. And, um, uh, Elaine says, I work on retainers only, and I don't put any number of hours in the contract. We never have, never, ever, ever have. And you know what, guys? Our bigger clients never ask us how many hours we spend working on it. They just never ask us. Um, and, and Nelson says, me too. I haven't either. Um, never have I put that in a contract um, and never have our good, you know, really good retainer clients ever, ever asked us for that information. They know like that they're paying for a result. They don't care, you know, and that's how I feel about my team. I don't care what goes into what they do to get a result. I don't care. Um, obviously I vet them and I know they're great writers. They, um, are ethical. They're aligned with our corporate values. Our freelancers are like dialed into, I've worked with them for so long that I know how they operate, but I don't care how long they work on it. I just care about the results. So if you find yourself at, you know, week three of the month and your report's looking a little lackluster, maybe you go back out and you kind of drum up some new opportunities. Um, but it's not about saying, oh gosh, it's three months, three weeks into the month and I haven't spent enough hours. It's not about hours, guys. Okay. And if you must know, I try to structure my weeks so that I have nothing on Fridays. Two weeks ago or three weeks ago on Friday, I painted the whole day. I had the best day. I painted um, like a triptych, which is like three matching pictures, paintings for my new family room. Um, I'm so happy with how they came out. Um, my mom loves them. My family loves them. Um, I know. Um, I do have glasses. Okay, these are old Warby Parkers. They're so dorky. These are my distance glasses. I have, these are real dorky. I have like better ones that are a little bigger now. Um, and when I wear my new ones, I look like Clea from the home edit, <laughs> like exactly like Clea. Um, uh, Nelson, I had them on Instagram. Um, I can, sh I can put them on Instagram and you'll have to look, um, or go over and follow me there at generation PR and I can send you a picture there. 
Uh, maybe I'll post it in the group. Yeah, no, I, Daria is saying, oh, you guys, okay, so I'll post it in um, Profitable PR Pro since you guys are asking. They're abstracts. They're, so here's what I did, guys. This is my pro tip, okay? Because everybody's like, how did you get framed canvases? Because framing canvases is very expensive. The answer is you don't. <laughs> the answer is, here's my little shady hack. Um, I went to Home Goods. Love Home Goods. Love Home Goods. Home Goods is like my happy place. And I looked for several weeks at a time till I found matching pictures. Um, matching meaning the size matched, not the artwork on it, but the size and the frames matched. And it was the size that I needed the scale for my wall. And I brought home three pictures from Home Goods. Okay, three, paint, you know, printed canvases. And then I covered them. And here's the mistake I made. So if you want to do this, um, look for canvases that are not hand embellished because they'll print these pictures and then someone goes in and they add like texture or foil. I had a hard time covering the texture and the foil. So I spent two weeks prepping these canvases. So first what I did is I covered the frames completely with painter's tape. And then I used um, this white medium called Gesso, G-E-S-S-O. -S -S you can get all this stuff on Amazon. And also a modeling paste. And I smeared it on, honestly, with like a shower squeegee. <laughs> Sanded it off, put the Gesso on top. And I had to do several layers of that. Oh, no, did I bump my manicure? No. Um, until I got smooth canvases. So the painting, the painting only took me one day. But the canvas preparation was two weeks. But here's the deal. I got this massive, large scale framed and beautiful gold frames um, artwork. And the cost for me was around $220. Each picture was $60. If I bought canvases that size and went and had them framed, I got a quote, it was over $1,000. So, you know, and they were like instantly done. So if you wanna do this, my recommendation would be go to Home Goods and look for some canvases that match that are not embellished. Because if it's just printed, you can just paint right over it with, just paint the canvas white and then paint on top of it and use painter's tape around the frame. But they look really good um, if you're interested. Anyone who's on um, Instagram, you can go, I think, you know what? I think the stories might be gone. I'll post it again. Um, but they're like tones that match my new room perfectly and they just make me really happy. And there's like little secret messages kind of hidden in there. Um, they're, the paintings is the painting series is called Secrets One, Two, and Three. One of the secrets is that there's trashy art hidden underneath it that I painted over. That's secret number one. Um, you know, so anyway, there's little messages to my kids that are hidden. You can't see them or anything like that, but um, they're meaningful to me. And I know that I had the best day. The point of me saying this is that I had the best day taking that off that Friday two weeks ago to um, paint and it just made me happy and I'm doing more creative things. I was arranging succulents, you know, that made me really happy. I just like to get my hands in creative projects and I realized I hadn't been doing that in a while and it just brings me joy. It's like something that grounds me. So I wanna spend more time doing that. Um, but I have someone over here, I don't know if they're still on, but they said how to prepare a good pitch. Um, thanks, Daria. Um, how to prepare a good pitch. Well, this is what we cover in the pitch lab. There's honestly like so much that goes into it. We have an entire framework around it. Um, if you're interested, we have a masterclass called Crickets to Crushing It. We will, t it's a free masterclass and it tells you all about what we recommend goes into pitching. And it's all about timely, relevant content that's aligned and matches with the editorial outlet and that writer's specific editorial focus. Um, you know, succinct, well-crafted pitches. So um, if you are interested in learning more, reach out to my team, support at generationacademy.com or DM me on Instagram and I'll send you a link. And you can sign up for that free masterclass and learn all about what we recommend goes into, um, you know, solid, timely, relevant, targeted pitches. And our goal is to turn you into a pitching powerhouse. That's the goal. Um, anyway, that's what I have for you guys today. Do not trade dollars for hours. Shift your perspective on how your 
thinking about your retainer pricing and how you're structuring your time around your client work. I want you to have scalable businesses. And if you are trading dollars for hours, you do not have the opportunity to scale your business because you only have so many hours in the day or you bring in team members, but then you get, you know, you can only grow a certain amount, you know, for each team member because they're, they're limited. So let me know if you have any questions about that or any other um, questions. And for our newest members of Agency Accelerator, Daria and Shanadra, and who else is on here? Oh, um, Marlicia is not in it, but Naisha is in the Pitch Lab. Um, Larissa is in the Agency Accelerator. Um, Angel is in, are you in? You're in the Agency Accelerator. Let me know your thoughts on the program. I would love to hear. Hi, Jackie. Nice to see you. I'm not on Clubhouse really much anymore, Jackie. I think it's really, I did a Clubhouse chat yesterday and I was like, this is so lame, honestly, guys. Like it was great for a little while. Oh, Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Um, welcome. Let me know um, what you think about our programs. I'd love to hear feedback, especially from new members. I know you have a limited amount of content at this point. We do that so we don't overwhelm you, honestly. I don't want you to be like, blah um because we have a lot of stuff but just so you know it's all searchable so don't get overwhelmed and you can you own it forever oh yeah Lars is saying i haven't been on clubhouse for months i did a chat yesterday i'm a i'm a member of a board of a group called founded for women founders um and they asked some of us the board members to be in a clubhouse chat talking about diversity and inclusion in um, media opportunities and marketing for our clients i thought it was a great topic Oh, yay, Tammy says, love the pitch lab. Truly amazing. Eee, that makes me so happy. Thank you. I think it's amazing. I learn something every month when we put it together. Um, Larissa says, love the agency accelerator. I have been in PR since 1993, but never with an agency until last year. And it's been super helpful. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. That's great. Um, and anyone else? Shinadra says, I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. Your teaching style is amazing. I can honestly binge it. Oh, I love that. Thank you for saying that. And if you, hi, Kelly. And oh, Kelly, hi. Oh my gosh, Kelly. Kelly's crushing it right now, you guys. If you don't know, for members that are in the program, we have an app. You can watch it on your phone. All of it. Every single thing that you have access to in my content, including our audio recordings, video lessons, any resource in there, you can access it from an app on Inst on uh, Facebook. I'm going to tell you um, it's Kajabi, K-A-J-A-B-I. That's the platform I use to build all my programs and all my content. Um, over here, if you are in, I don't think anyone over here is in my programs actually, but um, go to the app store, look for Kajabi, and then you just log in under whatever you use to get into my stuff and everything is there. It's so good. So if you're like Shinadra and you want to um, binge, which I love, just don't, you'll get so sick of my voice, honestly. Like I, rock, I watch back some of my videos and I'm like, oh my God, my voice. Um, such a valley girl. But um, you can watch it on the go or listen, you know, on a podcast, you know, for going for a walk or whatever. Like, don't listen to music. Go on a walk and listen to music. Don't listen to me. <laughs> but um, it's all available on the go. We have moms that like listen in the car when they're on drop off line or they're just like, you know, out running errands or whatever. So let me keep you company um, when you're out and about and you can access everything. If you did not know that, it's really good. I'm like so glad we have that opportunity to offer an app. Um, yeah, uh, love this kind. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay, guys. Well, I really appreciate that positive feedback on all the programs, um, makes my day, honestly. And Kelly, I can't even tell you, we, um, yeah, we, uh, Kelly, my family has done like a happy dance around your email that you sent us. So she sent us an email last week about how she, it was like, oh my God, I did it in all caps about how she reached out to a dream client 
and secured a six month, six figure contract. Like, are you kidding me? That's unbelievable. That's like unbelievable. She's just going out on her own. Um, it's just, I'm so, so, so excited for her and she's, she's crushing it. And it's just that confidence she's having, reaching out and feeling, um, like she knows how to do it. And she has the steps to take, to feel confident, to cold outreach. She knows the value she brings. Yeah. Darius says, Kelly, awesome. Congratulations. Darius says, um, she just got into Clubhouse as an Android user. I am power networking. I am also very mindful as it can be a time suck. Yeah. Um, Kelly says, okay, I was hoping you would say something. Kelly says, it was amazing. And all because of what I learned in the Pitch Lab and Agency Accelerator. Like you're like, you may may just be our like most um, like valuable testimonial with like the fastest result ever at this point. I'm just so honored. And I, I hope to have an opportunity to share your story more and um, you know, just knowing your family and like how much, um, oh, Jackie, and I'll, I'll tell you in one second, um, just knowing how much you are dialed into your family and your children and all of their special needs. And, uh, it's just unbelievable what you're doing, Kelly. Like I'm, I'm blown away by you. So thank you for sharing that. We all like, my husband was like, oh my God, like this is incredible. We were so happy. Um, so Jackie asked what happened in our clubhouse chat. So it was for this um, founded series, big network. It's a paid group. They promoted it a ton. There were like six of us on there. We all invited people. It went out to like Instagram. It went out to um, the email list. It was promoted on LinkedIn. And we all like pinged people that we thought would be interested in joining. And nobody showed up. Um, it was like, <laughs> like people popped in and they left. It was maybe three guests. I think um, Elaine was there for like a little bit. I don't know if you're still on Elaine. Um, but like, to me, it just feels like Clubhouse is becoming a ghost town. I don't know. Um, uh, okay, so I have gotten clients. I've gotten not clients for my agency, but for our programs on Clubhouse. But that kind of engagement that I saw, like Jackie, when you and I connected the first time, like, yeah, it's changed so much. Like the the way that you and I connected and it was like such a genuine connection. And, you know, we were like, obviously, um, we were obviously like interested in the same things and in the same industry. And we connected on Instagram right away. That is not happening anymore. Um, but I did get a lot of really good people that I met initially and not so much anymore. Nelson's saying um, he's now on Clubhouse on Android and uh, do you get clients from uh, that or TikTok or is either platform a waste of time from that perspective? Um, what about corporate clients, Jen? Have you gotten any of them from Clubhouse or TikTok? No, I haven't. Um, I'm not really on TikTok. Um, yeah, I'm not really on TikTok more. We're doing reels and actually have to record a reel today. We do one every week and the engagement's really good there. But, um, I haven't really been on TikTok. Honestly, Nelson, I wouldn't spend the time to grow. Clubhouse is like low barrier to entry. Um, it's not like TikTok's a lot of work. Like you have to actually build things. Clubhouse, you can just pop into rooms that are relevant to you and like offer to, yeah, Larissa, that's where it's at. Um, yeah, she's saying I'm all in on LinkedIn as that's where my ideal clients are. Yes, LinkedIn is, and there's decision makers on LinkedIn. Um, I think LinkedIn is underrated as a social network. Um, it's, you know, there's a lot of opportunity on LinkedIn. Absolutely, um, especially if you, the only thing I would recommend against is um, these cold, um, like DMs that are automated don't, especially as PR pros, you guys, I, and I'm saying this because I did it and I did it twice through two different services. Um, and I hated it. It felt so out of integrity with what I, who I am as a person to have like an automated email funnel or like DM funnel on LinkedIn. And it felt out of alignment with what we do as PR pros which is targeted pitches, not mass messaging, right? 
Yeah, we talked about that, Nelson. It doesn't work. Um, it feels shady. I don't like it when people do it to me, but I was convinced by somebody that it would be a great way to reach the right people. And I did not like it. And I will not ever do it again. Ooh, a package is here. <laughs> what do we think we got? I don't know. Um, might be hiking gear. We're going um, to Zion and Bryce. If any of you have any recommendations in Utah for hiking, um, we're going for a week with the children. Very excited. Um, so lately it's been all like hiking poles and hiking socks and like water bottles and not so exciting, but the trip will be great. Um, but yeah, so LinkedIn, just be authentic. Don't um, do automated like these services that are like, oh, there's my package. Um, like Ninja, like a LinkedIn Ninja, like these services that are like, well, they'll connect you with 1500 contacts every month. It's like, I have lost control of what my LinkedIn feed looks like. And I need to go in and clear out people that are just like, I don't even know you. You don't know me. I like my network to be kind of tight. I want to know who everyone is, what they're up to. Um, I want to, I want to have a connection to them or their business in some way. And I feel like it just got out of hand. Um, oh, good. Yeah. Thanks, Larissa. She says this is really helpful. Good. Um, does anybody have any other questions about anything? It could be about PR. Hi. Um, LinkedIn all the way. Jackie says, oh, sorry, Instagram, uh, Instagram. I've been ignoring you. Um, get leads from LinkedIn, big fat workbook. Did you, um, did you use that resource, Larissa? Um, and if so, how did you feel about it? Obviously, if you're linking it, you thought it was good. Attraction marketing on LinkedIn. That's great. And also that type of stuff translates for other platforms too. Um, yeah. So yeah, let me know, guys, if you have any other questions. I really appreciate you. Oh, good. Okay, good. She's using using it right now. So that's a free resource, it seems like. Um, I'll check out. I can, I'll, I can only grab the link when I go onto Facebook. I'm just broadcasting on Ecamm. But um, anyway, guys, um, oh, this is a great um, Ariel. Ariel, did I say that right? Oh, thanks, Jackie. You rock, Jen. Um, she says, how do you decide how much to pay your team members and contractors? That is so interesting you asked that. Um, Helen Pritchard is really smart with this and no DMs. Okay, good. Yeah, that's Instagram or LinkedIn, sorry. We had this question yesterday. So I have a program called the Agency Accelerator and we have a part of it that has coaching called, called Agency Accelerator Plus. So we had about... 15 or so people on our coaching call yesterday. And this question came up and we talked all about it. So it's not just, um, it's not just my, um, oh, now Instagram's piping up over here. I love it. Um, it's not just like a simple answer, but the gist of it is, um, Ariel is that I work with freelancers. We try to get freelancers that are going to be um, working with us quite a bit and they want a lot of work with us. We have them as um, they're usually corporations. So corporations, meaning an individual that's incorporated, that's kind of a requirement in California. So they're 1099. They're independent. Okay. And they work independently um, because mine are all very senior and so they're very like self-managed um and we really talk about what is it going to take to get all of this work done and i don't want them to have to report hours to me i think reporting hours is terrible it's a rebellion against my time as an attorney doing billable hours i, I hate it um, and so I don't want these people to have to track hours. I think that's obnoxious. That's not like a courteous way to run a, run a business like as an expert. What is going on here? I don't know what's happening here. Um, so try to get a bundled rate. Like if you're giving them a lot of work or they know you're going to be a constant source of opportunities, you know, and then just ask them. And it's also depends for us on how much um, budget our clients have. And if they have a bigger budget, I'll throw the team more money because there's probably going to be more work that they're going to have to do. But at this point, I've worked with my team so long, I know what they need to make um, in order for it to be 
um, valuable to them and within budget for us so that there's margin. You need margin on your services. Okay. So you need margin on your services. Obviously, like I don't want you, I want you making more than you're paying your contractors, like meaning that they're not making more than you're making on the account. Okay. So you have to think about that when you're setting your rate and also when you're finding the contractors and working with them, just a bundled amount of hours plus minus, and you don't care what they put into it. Like they, you just want results. That's the whole topic of this discussion, right? Is just results and value you bring. Um, but we had an entire discussion in other members way. And this is the value of these coaching calls is it's not me. Like, I don't know everything and I don't know how everyone runs their businesses. It's a forum for discussion from other PR pros on how they're doing things as well. And we got a lot of really good information. So anyone who's an agency accelerator plus, if you watch the coaching call from yesterday, um, it's in there. And when we do the replay, it's going to be coded with when you can find that information if you want more about that. Hi, Clara. I hope you're still here. I am leaving my corporate comms career Ooh, to be a flight attendant. Oh my God. That's so cool. I'd love to find a solopreneur or independent agency to help out as a freelancer to stay in the industry. Do I have a suggestion for you, Clara? That's so exciting. Congratulations. Oh, good. You're still here. Oh my gosh. We love to travel. I'm so excited for you. That sounds like such an exciting career, although I'm terrified to fly. <laughs> so... Um, that would not be a career I would like really enjoy. Um, anyway, but good for you. <laughs> I'm like just scared. Oh boy. Let's see what's here. Um, but what I would recommend, we have a Facebook group called profitable PR pros. Go find us on Facebook. Um, because there's tons of really great PR professionals, solopreneurs, or small boutique agencies looking for freelancers, looking for people like you that are really skilled, really talented, but you're not looking for a full-time thing. That's how I hire my freelancers too, is um, people that are not looking for a full-time thing. But go to Profitable PR Pros on Facebook. Um, we'll let you in. I think there's like questions we ask you. Awesome, yay, oh good. Yes. Okay, good. Join. And we do, there's so much good info in there. Really great people. Um, Clara too. Cool. You got, I love the cross pollination here with um, Instagram and Facebook. Um, Nelson saying, I got a client in 2018 from a CEO that was looking at my work on LinkedIn um, that I did for his competitor. Hmm. I called him on a Friday at 4 p.m. Um, in the afternoon, the receptionist told me he'd left for the day, and then she put me through to his cell phone and then arranged a meeting with him. After the meeting, I walked out of his office with a six-month contract. This happened because I picked up the phone and called him because I saw that he was looking at my work on LinkedIn. I call this the best LinkedIn networking story ever when I tell people about it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, being proactive. Um Yes, me, um, Jackie, what's yes you? What did I say that you're resonating with? Um, that you love to fly or travel? I love to travel. I don't like to fly. And actually, we're driving to Utah. I do the driving because I get car sick. Um, does anybody get car like more car sick the older they get? I feel just absolutely horribly nauseous sitting in the passenger seat of anybody's car. And I used to not be like that. I can't go on rides at Universal because of those like virtual reality kind of rides just make me instantly want to barf. It's terrible. Um, is it just me? Um, oh, good. Uh, yes. Okay, good. Jackie saying I'll connect with, um, cl with uh, Clara in the Facebook group. Yes, that's awesome. Jackie, profitable PR pros. I think that you're in it. I hope you are. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. My team tells me to keep it short, but I can't. We're having a conversation. It's a conversation. Um, but I just really appreciate all of you being on and for the members of our programs who constantly show up. You guys, these are the people putting in the work. People like Kelly and Elaine and Larissa and Daria, all these people that are actually showing up and putting in the work. Um, and getting results. And Shanadra, who's always here. Tammy, nice to see Tammy here too. And Nelson, who's here every single week. Um, you know, 
this is how you get results. You, I, you know, putting in the work, you're welcome, Daria. Um, I really appreciate you. Um, you know, I really appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for joining me every single week. I'm so happy to talk to people and not just to like the ether with nobody there. Um, and ask any questions you have, uh, grab this link. Let me see if it still works. Yeah. Um, there's a resource we have that's like our insider secrets. It's like an 18 page resource. Um, grab it and we'll help you become a pitching powerhouse. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon.